The opinions expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, staff, management, or advertisers. Coming to you on stations coast to coast, it's the Making It Radio Show with your hosts, self-made millionaires, Tommy Runfola and Todd Williams. Tommy Runfola, founder and president of one of America's top technology consumer products and media companies, author, investor, and National Entrepreneur of the Year nominee. Tommy has worked with five U.S. presidents and vice presidents. Todd Williams, founder and CEO of Inc. Magazine's 2013 fastest growing food and beverage companies in America, a former NBC TV personality and Harvard Business alumnus. Make It It is the source for success stories and in the trenches information that outlines a roadmap to the American dream. And now, here's Tommy and Todd. Welcome, America. This is Tommy Ranfolo with my co-host and partner, Mr. Todd Williams, along with our moderator and news anchor, Brittany Dorsey. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. I had good. a... Good. Had Todd, a good time. Got some soaked up some sun out in the, on the West Coast. I was just going to ask you about that. You're out there closing a big deal, I understand. Yeah, and... Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, actually went to a uh, a cool uh, shooting range and got to shoot a uh, fifteen thousand uh, dollar sniper rifle. Oh, that's right up your alley. Oh, uh, look at that bullet! Oh my gosh! They gave me the casing. Yeah, the people can see that now. We're in our studio and we have our YouTube channel, so uh, the folks at home can actually see what you're showing me. Yep, this, and to find it, go to our website, makingitnow.com. That's the easiest way to find our YouTube channel. This bullet, this is just the casing was a uh, $30. $30 for the bullet? Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about this is where our tax dollars are going. Well, you know, uh, one of the places. Uh, hopefully they're not shooting too many of those $30 bullets. I would say I got I hit it right on the bullseye, so oh, I'm well, happy of course. that. I Me too. Ex- I would expect that you <laughs> Let me would. interject. Me too. All right. Well, <laughs> so I've been having some me fun. Shoot I don't too. know why I was left out of this shooting party, <laughs> but in any event. We'll Brittany, invite you next time. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Brittany, what's going on? All right, guys. We have an awesome show today. We are going to be discussing um, a show very similar to Shark Tank, but not Shark Tank. We'll get to that in a second. Then we have a great interview with a man who was actually featured on Shark Tank, not only once, but twice. Then we are ending the program today discussing training employees all right and i understand the uh, gentleman from shark tank is mr dave alwin yes all right yes we have an awesome interview set up with him great okay, information. we'll look forward to that yes he's uh mark cuban is his partner yes well that, don't give too. all the information away we're gonna get to I mean, that in the second that. part yeah. you know gotta let the people know people okay this guy okay. has some cachet yeah M- mark has. You know, he got mark cuban's attention we, we, that's we, enough of a teaser at making it we deal with heavy hitters exactly you got to keep the audience we interested the, they'll the leave players. heavy hitters with big bullets yeah, that they'll say <laughs> <laughs> They'll say, uh, well, who are they interviewing? Like, uh, you know, are these guys big time? Like, right. we're big time. All right. We're making it. Okay, we're making it. Let's, let's put it this way. He was not featured on the worst pitch collection on YouTube, okay? He was That's way good. better than that. Good enough to get money from Mark Cuban. Making it show buzz. Okay, so first up, we are discussing um, a very similar show to Shark Tank, and it's called Dragon's Den. So predatory animal coming in to their lair, pitching to them, trying to get money from them. Mm. So this, it it was interesting to read about this. It's a UK-based show, Dragon's Den, but it's actually a spinoff of the show that originated in Japan, Tigers of Money, Money Tigers. So that's where it all started, actually, in Japan. Um, But by the way, Brittany, is that where Shark Tank originated? When I read up on this, uh, I I saw that the original franchise was out of Japan, which I had not known. Yeah. And it's all over the world now. So I'm assuming, well, maybe that's where Shark Tank comes from. Yeah, it it, basically it all birthed from Money Tigers. Okay. Yeah. So Money Tigers is where it started in Japan. Um, So what we know as Shark Tank and what we think is so novel here in the States actually is worldwide under different names and different basically predatory animals. Yes. Um, So Dragon's Den, very similar setup, very similar cast of venture capitalists that these people are coming in, pitching, attempting to get money from. Um, Very similar in that all of the dragons, sharks, are most concerned with the proven sales of the entrepreneur pitching the idea. So once again, it's not just about having a great idea. When you're actually trying to make it, it's about what sales have you actually generated and proven before you try to go get VC money. Right. Yeah. You, you know, I, I watched uh, several episodes mm-hmm. of 
uh, Dragon's Den. Yeah. And uh, it, indeed, it's very similar to Shark Tank. Uh, but what I really uh, got the same feeling as I do when I watch Shark Tank, and, and that is it's a mini course on entrepreneurism. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, th these... Um, uh, these dragons or sharks uh, in in the case of America, uh, they're the greatest mentors you could have. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all billionaires. They ask the right questions. Yeah. You better be able to answer them. Yeah. And the preparation, as we'll find out, uh, I'm sure, in the next uh, episode yeah. or the next segment when we talk with uh, Dave Alwyn is phenomenal. The things you have to go through just to get on the program. Oh, yeah. So That's it's awesome. it's the same way with uh, Dragon's Den as well. Yeah, well, you know, w one overriding thing I see is uh, there's an entrepreneurial lesson within the actual uh, where Shark Tank and Dragon's Den and originate from is that you can duplicate and rebrand something successful and it can be hugely successful. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's not about, you know, necessarily uh, making something brand new. Right. right. It's, you know, distributing it to another area, you know, renaming it, remixing it a little bit, um, and, and it can be great, very successful. Well, and really making it specifically applicable to that audience. I think that what you're trying to say, Todd, is that you can have a great idea, but the specificity of who you're talking to, who your target audience is pertaining to our country is what actually made it be successful in our country here as well. You're listening to Making It with, uh, uh, with Tommy and Todd. Um, what, what I'm saying is with, if, People are, are, most people look for like the big idea, right? The, the new idea, something no one's done before. And they spend all their, spend all their wills with that. And in actuality, you just need to find an idea that's working mm -hmm. and rebrand it mm -hmm. and re, uh, re, 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 fine tune the, the details, suit. fine tune the details. Uh, I noticed on this show, one thing that got me was, uh, like this show started in 2005, then Shark Tank was 2009. And I noticed they even have, uh, Kevin uh kevin and robert are also on mm -hmm. this show and i think it's a little bit more raw it came across a little bit more raw well i to me, when like, i was watching it i couldn't figure it out if they were just literally more raw about business and money or if the um the accent was making it more harsh but it did feel more harsh to me no they were they were like <laughs> they were showing several people i didn't like, know if it was the like, british accent that was doing it you come here unprepared that that that's that that's horrible you know, they, they, they showed the entrepreneurs messing up. They're the, sort of the Simon Cowles of Shark Tank. Yeah, yeah, but it was like all of them stand. were yes. like that. Uh, I, I just think it seems a little bit more intimidating coming into the Dragon's Den than coming into Shark well, Tank. Don't yeah. you think the British are a little more, um, they have an edge to them compared to Americans who are a little more politically correct? Yeah, yeah, I, th I think that might be true. Yeah. And so I think like, when you see like uh, on Shark Tank they come up, and it seems like the the sharks are like smiling and like more encouraging, almost encouraging. Like, yeah. Okay, we're gonna give you a chance. Just don't mess up. Right. Dragons in it seems like they're already set. Mm -hmm. You know that they're gonna rip you apart if you don't do great. Well, you I I think it kind of shows like you know the spirit of America being the spirit of the American dream, and that you know everybody it's good for everybody to have a dream and want to be an entrepreneur, and we are a little more encouraging of those entrepreneurs. Right. Yeah. But at the end of the day, on Shark Tank, if you get the money, it's because you're actually super super good. Um, where on Dragon's Den, they're just going to tell you you suck. And a, you a, suck. A few years ago, I I uh, spoke in Toronto, Canada, and uh, I talked on uh, I spoke on what we call the American dream mm -hmm. and I assume that there's a Canadian dream and of course there is and there's an Australian dream and the British dream everybody has a dream in mm -hmm. the world uh, around entrepreneurism of making it a of making it yeah. of course yeah and we you know we've gotten some feedback on our show that people are listening to it on iHeartRadio and mm -hmm. so on in, in other parts of the world uh, so people worldwide really want to make it. W one of the episodes I watched, uh, I, I thought was very interesting because the contestant, if you will, was actually a consultant who was helping other people make it. Okay. And, uh, he got, he got together with his partners and he said, well, we're helping all these people double, triple, quadruple their businesses, become millionaires. Why don't we do the same for ourselves? And he came up with an idea of uh, a, uh, a chewing gum and uh, it's called uh, pure and it's aspartame free gluten free 
uh, is safe for pregnant moms, is non-GMO, is diabetic friendly, and it tastes great. And uh, one of the sharks, uh, uh, a woman named Arlene, uh, I say sharks, one of the dragons, a woman named Arlene, uh, decided that she wanted to invest in this company. It turns out they're already, they since uh, 2013 when they went in business, they're already doing $10 million a year in business. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so she went with um, uh, the um, entrepreneur, uh, CEO of the company, and they went to Switzerland where they manufacture it and so on. And it was really a very interesting story how, how they um, uh, how, how they developed uh, this uh chewing gum mm -hmm. and with her help how they're distributing it worldwide they expect that they will do a hundred million dollars in business oh in goodness. the next couple of years wow that's awesome yes. awesome chewing gum you're listening awesome to making gum. it you can check out our website making it now.com awesome chewing gum and uh, i need to find that chewing gum because i i need those uh, sweeteners out of it too it's called pure gum hmm. yeah and that sounds good contains no aspartame which is uh, an artificial sweetener as you know in nutris uh, sweet and equal Todd, I'll have you know I, I got some gum that was you know added uh, those sugars free right and uh, I did not share any with you this yeah. past weekend well Sorry. you're not allowed to chew in the studio <laughs> did you know that you're was not allowed good? to chew in the studio yes it was good and I didn't share <laughs> uh -huh. okay. She probably got pure and didn't tell I got me. Spearmint gum and I didn't share. She probably watched Dragons Den, saw <laughs> saw pure gum, got some, and didn't didn't share it with me. And it uh to try to get an edge anyway, on the anyway, line. inside well, joke moment there. All right. There was one guy Back on to there, business. There, there was one guy on there, he had an idea for uh preventing toilet backsplash. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's so funny. That's always like Wait, like backsplash like when you flush or backsplash yeah, yeah, like when backsplash you're standing when you up and peeing in it. When you're the, the whole thing. Hmm. Did, do I need to get into the details of what backsplash is? I can't, is? no, yeah. I want to okay. make sure it prevents all different kinds of backsplash he, he of all liquids. A, he actually brought a toilet onto the set. Okay. You know, and had a toilet on there. But and he gave his picture That's the such toilet. an important part of demonstrating how well your product works. Exactly. I mean, back to Dragon's Den, I was watching one episode where this guy, he had some kind of water filtration system, and he was trying to pitch that it was such a great water filtration system and trying to justify the cost of it. And so he was comparing it to like, this is the Rolls Royce. This is not like the Mini Cooper. This is the Rolls Royce of water filtration systems. Right. And then he'd had it set up, he said, for five hours. And so he poured out the water and gave it to all of the, the dragons. And they were like, are you kidding me? This tastes horrible. And they're like, give me a clean cup. Give me a clean cup. And they, you know, poured some more out. And they were like, oh, my God, this this is a horrible aftertaste. Are you kidding me? Oh, wow. And it, 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 he'd been fighting to justify his price up until that point. And then he went into, you know, trying to backpedal and say, well, it's got to be set up for more than five hours and da, 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 da. But needless to say, he did not get the well, money. You know, that's a, that's a common mistake that entrepreneurs make and small businesses make. Mm -hmm. They are more concerned with the product and the operations and so on than they are about the things that create sales. Yeah. Uh, for instance, Your on water tasting good uh, on the <laughs> on the program about the uh, chewing gum, uh, one of the uh, uh, sharks, uh, I keep calling them sharks, they're actually dragons. dragons. One of the dragons asked about distribution and uh, logistics and supply chain and mm -hmm. so on. And even though this company was doing $10 million a year, it re the, the CEO didn't have a lot of knowledge about those things that really go into uh, making the product uh, accessible to the world. Right. Well, you know, one thing, like like when you see uh, that people seem, seem to be hesitant to do in businesses um, is actually just duplicate success. So it's like there's a fear of like, if you duplicate success, success it's not going to work. Right. right. But literally, if you just like sit there and watch or analyze something that already is winning. Right. right. And you just like write down, like um, several of these contestants, uh, these entrepreneurs say, that they actually watch the pitches yeah. of course. for years until so they figured out how the pitch is right. Exactly. Um, so I mean that's a huge lesson right there. Well, you know the whole for all the, entrepreneurs out there. The the whole idea of scaling is uh, something that every business needs to learn if they're going to grow. And uh, what you're really talking about is scaling. You're listening to Making It with Tommy and Todd. We come back. We're going to be interviewing Dave Alwan from Shark Tank. Who got we'll money right from Mark Cuban. That's right. We'll be right back. <laughs>